Hello, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Oh, what's happened? Where did that come from? No idea where that came from. Oh, I know what happened. Yeah, same problem that happened earlier in the stream. Um, apparently, I put my OBS into uh, studio mode. So it is in, uh, it's doing the like program preview thing. And that is not what I, how I normally use it. So all my shortcuts are wrong. So yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, let's go back. I think I was experimenting with something for that. And yeah, so that did not, that did not work. Um, and then I think that also messed up my output from OBS. Let's just reload that now that we're back in normal mode to the Ultra Studio. And hopefully that will fix the music crackling too. Uh, let's try that with some music. Let's put some music on and see if you hear any crackling there. Hopefully not. All right. Now we're back. Good to see everybody here. Welcome. We are seven days out from NAB, and we have a lot of fun stuff to do at NAB. Um, I mentioned last week, but it is now like totally final. We're all set. Um, the plan for NAB is I'm going to be filming interviews at booths around the show with Photo Joseph, and uh, we're going to be both on camera posting to both of our um channels youtube and actually i think maybe only instagram uh they didn't no instagram and youtube not tiktok this time we did not we did not we don't have tiktok audiences and i think the brands also don't have tiktok audiences so um but yeah that's the that's the plan and posting them hopefully the same day turnaround if not next day but i think we'll be able to pull off the same day for most of them I started packing yesterday on a BTS stream with members. We were just hanging out and chatting. I had to actually finish building these IKEA drawers to get the the room cleaned up here, uh, and then started deciding what to bring to NAB. So uh, that is that was fun, and I can share what I'm gonna pack in the bag today. Weirdly, I'm actually leaving for Vegas today, even though it's a week out, because I'm actually first going on another trip before Vegas. So I have to bring everything tomorrow morning. My flight's at 6 a.m. Not looking forward to that. Uh, but I've done it before. And it's fine. Uh, going to Dallas. I'm going to watch the eclipse. Total coincidence. I happen to be on a layover at the eclipse time. It's going to be interesting. Uh, and then get on a plane to uh, my next trip and then come back, fly, land in Vegas on Saturday night. Unfortunately, missing some of the Saturday parties, but yeah. Uh, Big Shot Media says another day in Vegas. It's getting cool to see some stuff coming out. Uh, cool. Well, it seems like the weather is about to warm up a lot, which is... Um, now, where did my chat go? Right, I turned it off because the map was on, on uh, blocking it. Uh, yeah, Matt says hello from Australia at 2 a.m. Well, thanks for joining. It's late there or early, depending on your circumstances. Bill says, any thoughts on the Blackmagic pre-NAB announcement? So it's impossible to guess what they're going to launch, uh, except when you can find FCC filings of their new products before they're, la they're launched. So I do know <laughs> there's at least one new camera coming out. Um, there's an FCC filing that uh, for their Wi-Fi chip that they use on it. And they I dug up the filing and uh, found out that they actually... Um, they actually included a screenshot from the menu interface that showed the camera name. So there's at least a new camera. Um, but I have no idea what to expect from ATEMs. I it could be it could be anything. I kind of suspect no ATEM mini updates uh, at this point, but I could be surprised. Um, I could be pleasantly surprised. There is a gap in their rack mount ATEMs. Uh, maybe they've figured out um, 4K versions of more of them or the uh, or possibly the possibly the ISO version of the 4K switcher. We'll see. We will see. 
Aiden says, did you see the Blackmagic update that allows for USB-C webcam functionality? Maybe a USB-C ATEM. Yeah, they did just do an update to a bunch of products. Um, which, let's see, what was that? Um, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera webcam out. Oh, and they added a bunch of new camera control APIs and like um, network stuff as well, which is cool. And that's relatively new. The Cloud Store Mini is relatively new, which is, um, oh, and they added user authentication to the <laughs> Cloud Store, which is good. Because uh, right now you just have to connect to it in, des in uh, guest mode, which is a little bit weird. But yeah, okay, so the, uh, if you do have a question for me, by the way, before we get too far along, uh, start your message with Q and it puts it in my question list, which makes it easier to spot later. So uh, please do that. Um, let me scroll back through before we lose the beginning chats. The we had oh Gwen is here. I had to miss last week because of a job. Well, that's I mean it's not that's good. You had to have have a gig. That's good. Welcome back. Matt says here's a funny one. My Rodecaster Pro would not work directly on the Yellow Box Ultra. I had to take it into the Scarlet Two I Two. The guy on the Facebook says his worked. Part one, part two. So it works fine on the USB A port, but not the USB C port. That's bizarre. Uh, no idea why, no idea why. Although weirdly, I noticed on the Director Mini, the USB-C port doesn't host devices at all. So you have to use the USB-A port for webcams. So maybe it's something similar like that. That's so weird. ZYXXY Digital Media says, wish I could be there to meet y'all taking a few days off to live stream the Eclipse, then going back to work. Oh, you're gonna live stream the Eclipse. Ooh, what's your plan? And how do you know you're going to get a cell signal there and also it not be super crowded? They need an ATEM Extreme with six SDI and two HDMI. I agree. That would be great. Um, or like the original TV studio, which was uh, four, four and four, but the two you could switch. So it was two were always SDI, two were always HDMI. And then there were... Two more HDMI, two more SDI, but you could switch the middle two between SDI and HDMI. So it was a six channel switcher. Uh, but I, I like that flexibility. But yeah, I would love to see more devices with a mix of HDMI and SDI because it's rare that you're ever only in one of the ecosystems. Because like, even if you have all SDI cameras, you're going to need at some point to plug in a computer. It's just going to happen. So discontinue the one ME rack mount and discount the two ME. Yeah. Uh, that wouldn't be a bad thing. I I'm still I'm still very confused about the uh, one ME Constellation HD, mainly because it doesn't have Super Source. If it had Super Source like the Extreme does, right, which is twelve ninety five, it would make sense. But it's such a weird box. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. We went. We rented a house in Hot Springs with great Wi-Fi six. I have a travel router, router connected to the Wi-Fi here, and extension cords and Cat six cables all set. Just worrying about the weather. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, cool. That sounds like fun. Um, is it which channel is it on? Is it going to be on your channel here? Because I can drop a link, uh, in the chat then, and we can we can watch it tomorrow for anybody who's who's here. Uh. I don't, oh, weird. I don't have a way to get your channel link from here easily. Uh, I'm curious about the Yellow Live Alpha Cam versus the new Mevo Cam. Yeah, Frank actually did a live stream about it um, on the Yolo Live channel, and he had a good comparison chart showing the feature differences. Um, they're definitely different because the main difference is that the Mevo camera is not just a camera, like it's part of the Mevo ecosystem. So you don't, just plug it into HDMI and use like a camera, you're you're kind of expected to um you're kind of expected to use it with the Mevo app. Like you can use it by itself as just a HDMI out, but that it's kind of defeats the purpose. And then if if that if you're doing just that, it's kind of an expensive just HDMI camera. 
but the whole point is that it's part of the, the app control, multicam, that kind of stuff. So, um, yep. That is the plan for, oh, for your channel. Okay, cool. Well, now you know where to go watch the Eclipse live tomorrow. Go check out ZYXXY Digital Media. Weather's supposed to be good in Arkansas. It's South Texas that will have issues, if you believe the weatherman. Oh, no. Am I in? Is Dallas in South Texas? I don't really know the geography of Texas very well. So I might not get a good view of it, but it'll at least still get dark. Uh, no, Dallas is not in South Texas. Okay. Dallas is up there. So maybe I'll get, maybe I'll have good weather tomorrow. Extreme ISO with HEVC encoding for more efficient streaming would be nice. That is also true. That is a good point. Um, or even SRT. HEVC over SRT would be fun. Speaking of which, I, <laughs> I was going to post that video last week um, about comparing RTMP and SRT. And then instead, I did the update on the Director Mini updates because they put out some impressive firmware updates for the Director Mini. Go check out that link, that uh, video, if you're curious. It is, um, it was an impressive update, actually. So let me grab that link. Uh, firmware update 2.4. Um, so I just went through a couple of like the top things I was interested in about the update and um, it turns out the video was like 18 minutes long so I had a lot to say apparently uh, but it is now an RTMP server so you can stream to it from things you it has instant replay now it has network bonding via speedify uh, it can bring in web graphics so and I actually tested it with my uh, chat overlay extension and it works great um, it can control Obsbot PTZ webcams the USB over USB which is very cool because uh, that's like been the problem with those um, those USB webcams in the past is that as soon as you plug them into like a converter or use use them as a USB webcam not on your computer you don't get control over it anymore. Um, so yeah, that's cool. That's very cool. Uh, Sound Ace, can we use ATEM Mini Extreme as a video wall controller? I guess it depends on what you're trying to do with the video wall controller. Um, the ATEM Mini Extreme, the, the main limitation here is the number of outputs you have. So um, the ATEM Mini Extreme HDMI version only has uh, two outputs. And if you want multi-view, you, then you only have one extra out. But if it's just a video wall controller, you only get two outputs. So um, that's not a very big wall. Uh, the SDI Extreme has four SDI outs. So that might get you a little closer. But it really depends on what you're doing. But um, with the inputs and outputs, and like, are you trying to switch what's on the video wall uh, between like? Actually, it's going to be pretty limiting. Um, like, let's say you have. Let's take an example of just two, because it, it'll work with two. Let's say you want to just switch between. You have two screens. Let's say it's like a long wall. You have two screens, and you want to switch between um, a camera. But if you want to get that camera into two screens wide, you're going to have to do some tricks or deal or live with low resolution. Um, and then if you switch between a camera or like a computer, slides on a computer, you could bring two computers in on two inputs and then route those to both screens out. Um, or just like a graphic, a still graphic. And if you want to do a still graphic, you do have two media players in the extreme to load two graphics in at a time. And then you can output both of those one over each output. So you could use it for that. That would be that would take up your you know six inputs, maybe five inputs, um, and route to do two outs. If you're trying to do that with four screens, then there's still only two media players here, so you can't really do it with still graphics anymore. So that's kind of awkward. So I think you're going to run into a bunch of limits because it's not really meant for that. If it happens to be able to work based on the number of inputs and outputs, fine. But otherwise, it's you're going to be you're probably going to be limited. Um, and yeah, IT never gets old. Says there are dedicated video wall controllers that are cheaper and purpose built. Cheaper, really? Because I've found that there's nothing under a thousand dollars in the video wall controller realm. Well, depending on what your what the features are, there's some like one input to four output controllers that are cheap. Um, 
So if you just want to take one video signal in and then split it to four screens, those are relatively cheap. But as soon as you're getting into like more fancy stuff, they get expensive. Emmanuel says eight channels on the ATEMs are not enough. It'd be nice to have a 12 channel, eight SDI, four HDMI with six aux, four HDMI, two SDI. Yeah, I mean, that's basically the, the uh, Constellation series at that point, right? Because you have like, um, with the rack mount ones, with this one, like even the 2ME, because you have, let's look at the back panel. Here you've got, what is that, 20 inputs and 12 outputs. No HDMIs though, so that's the downside. Uh, but yeah, basically that's, I agree. It would be fun to have a smaller one with a few more inputs. Because uh, yeah, you, it's easy to fill up eight inputs. Where was I? Does the Yellow Box Pro AFE work with local video playback? Currently, I have to switch offline in audio, so the local video audio is the only audio heard. I thought it did. If it's not, but that's only going to work if they're all in AFE mode. Because um, if you have your line in audio set to on, then it won't. Oh yeah, of course there's no AFV in line in audio. audio. Line in audio is either, so it's not about local video playback, it's about your line in audio doesn't know when to turn off because there's no video corresponding to the, the line input, the analog input. So your line in is just on or off and uh, your video playback audio should be, well, obviously it's only going to play audio if it's playing, um, but I, that's just a limit of, of using analog in, audio input, I guess. Forecast is showing 50% chance of rain in the Dallas area on Monday. Oh, no. Do you know if Apple has some, done something weird with iOS support for lightning to HDMI adapters? I could not get HDMI out of three different phones, and I tried two different official Apple adapters. Well, it is weird because it's not um, it's not like a video signal the way it is with a uh, computer. It's actually a compressed, uh, H, I think it's H.264 compressed video feed that goes out that USB port, the lightning port to the dongle, which then creates the HDMI signal there. So yes, it's weird. Um, it is weird that you weren't able to get three different phones and two different Apple adapters to work. Um, what were you plugging it into? Um, but yes, iPhone outputs are weird for sure. Uh, Bill says, what about firmware updates for Blackmagic switchers or iPhone apps? So they did already do some recent firmware updates um, for the, what was it? It was the, it was the, con it was the Constellation 4K. Um, switchers, oh, 8K, right. The huge one, the really expensive one. But this is a massive update for the 8K because it hasn't been updated in a while. It has audio mapping, borderless multi-view, custom border colors, a bunch of multi-view updates. Um, but the audio thing is great because this was like a feature in the 4K that they didn't have in the 8K and everyone who bought the 8K was like, well, crap. <laughs> now what? Uh, so that's good. Um, and that was just like two weeks ago. So, yeah. Okay, uh, what am I doing? I am going to, oh, Bill says, wish list for Blackmagic. Firmware update bringing SRT to studio camera and switchers. Yes, I agree, which I would not be surprised if this is the case this year because they did do an SRT update on the web presenter and uh, streaming bridge. And that, because it originally shipped without any SRT support, the fact that they can update it suggests to me that they might be able to update other products too. Um, so, yeah. 
Oh, Matt has a good question. Do you know of a plugin for Keynote that would block an area of the slide for a picture in picture window? I teach a class and use my picture in the top right, but I have to play with the slides. Oh. Why? I'm not sure I entirely follow this. Why is your picture in the top right? Like your video is in the top right? Is this for like online class or in person? I guess that's my first question. Um, but yeah, plugin for Keynote you know, that would block an area of the slides. Never heard of it, anything like that. That's interesting, interesting problem. Andre says Office Hours is doing Eclipse coverage tomorrow as well. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, that's fun. Oh, like in Zoom, where you don't see your well, Zoom screen sharing doesn't sh share your own view of the Zoom interface. No, I've never heard of anything like that. Interesting. Never tried, though. OK, should we talk about what I'm bringing to NAB? Because I did a little bit of packing, and I have a fun little collection of stuff, um, which I need to get it all into a bag today because, again, I'm leaving tomorrow. So um, hopefully it all fits uh, between that and the stuff I need for the other event. But let's go over and see what I've got over there. Ignore the shelving in the background. <laughs> this is for the, the house. Oh, I did want to, I did want to <laughs> share this little thing I printed this morning uh, that goes in my wallet without uh, showing you my driver's license. The but the I so I'm going to I'm going to Italy tomorrow and I I dug up my my foreign currency so I have a bunch of euros here and I made this little card that slips into my wallet that holds eight euros. <laughs> it they're just suspended in there. They're they're it's just like a perfect fit. Uh, it's the I use the dimensions of the currencies from like the the official website and they just like squeeze right in. Oops, uh oh, hopefully, yeah, there it goes in from that way, apparently. They squeeze right in, and uh, then that can slip into a wallet. And now I've got change in my wallet, which is handy because uh, I don't, I normally don't have this problem in the US because the smallest or the largest coin that is really in use is a 25 cents, which is not terribly useful, but in the EU, you got two euro coins, which is like an actual amount of money you can use to buy something. So Aaron even over engineers his wallet. Yes, accurate, accurate. Uh, oh, we got more data about Keynote part two. It's for a class online. So my video doesn't cover the slides. Uh, why? Second question. Why do you need your video on top of the slides in the first place then? Maybe do a side by side layout instead, right? If you're trying to like record it, which is this happened, this happens to me all the time. I'm trying to record a, a, a online presentation. So I want my face and the slides in the recording. And uh, then, yeah, I don't want my face to cover the slides. So I that's the side by side. That's the purpose for the side by side layout, which I also have here, right, which is um, the which is this layout. And that's why I do this so that my face doesn't cover up part of the computer screen. Um, but of course, this requires an ATEM extreme or similar That euro holder is really cool. Thanks. So <laughs> the eight euros won't get you that far. Well, like you can buy like bread and snacks at the train station for two euros. 
So you're traveling to Europe and then to Vegas with gear. Any custom stuff that you have to go through with that? No, I've never had any trouble bringing the, the amount of gear that I bring um, into Europe because it's not like a ton. It's not like I'm coming with like two suitcases or Pelican cases full of similar looking cameras. They're only going to care about that if it's like looks like you're importing stuff. But everything I'm bringing is like clearly personal items. But let's take a look. Because I've got these drawers now here, which means all my stuff is easily accessible now. Um, not camera related. I made these little badges for myself and Joseph to, um, to as, as we're going around the booth, this is like got our socials and a little QR code talking about the project and on the back instructions for people at the booth. Um, so as we film a video with them, I can, you know, show them this and say, hey, don't forget to share our story. Uh, it's also an NFC card, so you can tap it with your phone and get to the link. I did this because I wasn't actually sure if my order of business cards was going to come in time, but I also have business card versions to actually leave there in person. Um, so these are, and they they feel so nice. They're like the silky texture. Um, so we'll have a stash of these and hand these out to people at the booth so they can find our story later. Uh, my plan is to take my badge and this is from last year and stuff it full of these cards so that they're always accessible. Um, and yeah, hopefully, I guess probably this way so they're taller. Yeah, so I'll keep a stash of like 10 or so in here at a time. These are thick cards though, so they actually add up really fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten. That was a good grab. Um, yeah, that makes it thick already. But so I'll, I'll keep this on me all the time, so I can hand these out. I have a back stock of them somewhere, um, somewhere in my bag. I'm only gonna be filming at like, I think at most ten booths a day, and that would be generous. Um. So I don't need that many cards, I guess. So we got cards. We've got oh, other branded items that I made are these mic flags. So these are like I bought blank mic flags and then printed these stickers. I got a couple scratches on it. It's kind of annoying, uh, but I printed these stickers on my um, printer on sticky vinyl. Stuck them down and did a little spray coat of finish over them to um, make to give them a little more protection. I got one for Joseph and one for me. So as we are interviewing, we can stick these on the microphone and then the videos look much much fancier with your own custom mic flags. So looking forward to that. So that's gonna have to go in the bag somewhere. I guess I'll I only have to carry one of those one direction because Joseph can carry his own mic flag. After that, Tom Buck has a mic flag blue, of course. Of course, that makes sense. Wasn't there a meme about donor costing more than 350 in Berlin now? Um, oh, a question from Colt. Shirvani Mevo start not available in India. I ordered four of them from eBay and they were all faulty and used. I tried to reach out to Mevo for support and they denied. Oh no. Can you like return them from wherever you bought them? I don't know. Like if what eBay sometimes has policies about that kind of stuff. So maybe check that. That's a bummer though. It sounds like someone sold you not working gear. Why are mic flags so popular in the US? Almost never see them in Europe. Here, the wind foam cover mostly carries the logo. I don't know, but I do know that I can't make a custom branded wind foam cover. So that's why I do the mic flag. Are you going to meet Photo Joseph in Europe? Isn't he in Belgium? No, he's in, he's in Slovenia. Um, I am ironically not going to meet him there. I'm going to Italy, which is not that far. But then I guess we're both flying to Vegas around the same time, which is pretty funny. Okay, so that's my non-video gear stuff. 
Um, so most of the most of the time, the or the actual filming of um, of the interviews is going to be with Joseph Rick. So he is bringing he is bringing a um, Lumix camera. I don't know what model exactly. He's bringing the Lumix camera and the XLR mic adapter for it and a wireless mic uh, and the Atomos recorder that's going to be recording this and uploading to the cloud. Speaking of, what microphone do you use with the mic flag? Well, so we're going to use Joseph's mic for the interviews, but I do have this mic, which I used at IBC last year, and I like it a lot. This is um, this is the Sennheiser MD46. There should be a link to that in the description. And um, at, it's just XLR, so nothing fancy there. But I also have this little kit for it, which I'm a big fan of it. This is also a Sennheiser. This one clips on the bottom. These are USB rechargeable. And then uh, that's the transmitter. And then the, this is the receiver. This has an eighth inch output. So this can go into a camera or whatever. Um, I'm going to bring this anyway, even though I'm probably not going to use it for the uh, most of the time because we're going to use Joseph's. He is going to have a slightly different microphone. Um, actually, is it the same microphone? It might be the same mic, but he has a different transmitter, which has XLR out, which he's going to use for his XLR input onto the Lumix adapter. Um, but this is the type of microphone that we're going to use for his. His looks almost the same. And then you just shove it through the foam and then it sits like that. So that's that's the mic flag. Um, so yeah, MD46, uh, it worked. I, that's what I used for all the interviews at IBC last year, and it worked really well. Very good at isolating audio from the show floor because it's very loud there. Custom foam windscreen and new project for the laser cutter. I don't know if that's going to work. Um, so my plan is, um, again, for most of the interviews that we're doing there, we're going to use his camera rig because it's got the auto uploading to Atomos or Frame.io um, through the Atomos recorder. And then that means I don't need to bring like a ton of stuff. So I only need to bring stuff I'm going to use myself either in Italy or when I'm not filming the interviews at an AB. So for that, that's why I'm not, that's why I don't need a ton of gear. Um, Oh, the other thing I am doing as part of the project is on Sunday morning, we're going to go live on Instagram to do a little uh, explainer about our plan for the show. So probably around eight or so or eight thirty. Um, then uh, go live on Instagram on both of our channels, which will be a fun trick and do a little explainer about the project, show the camera rig, that kind of stuff. So do find us on Instagram. Uh, if you want to see that little sneak peek, I'm going to record that also. So uh, we'll be able to edit that in later. Um, that will be filmed vertically. So I and basically I'm setting up the rig for that stream. Uh, so for that, I will be using the Majewell Director Mini. Um, I have batteries for it that last several hours. Uh, they're huge things though. It sticks out to like there, which is ridiculous, but they last a long time. Um, this will be in vertical mode. And this is what I did a little test of yesterday, and it actually worked really well. So you may have seen me go live on Instagram yesterday. Um, that was a little test in the middle of the members only stream where I was packing all the stuff and deciding and testing out the gear. But essentially, the Major Director Mini will push an SRT H265 feed into my studio. And uh, that's going to be picked up by the Magewell Pro Convert in the rack. And then I send it from there to two encoders, two different ATEMs uh, or ATEM and a web presenter and push from both of those to both of our Instagram accounts. So I'll have to set that up remotely. So I have to be able to VPN in here to be able to get the stream keys configured because Instagram doesn't it, it generates them like on the fly. They're different every time. You can't really plan ahead with that. And um, the 
But yeah, so it's going to be basically director mini, compressed feed, SRT, more reliable to my studio. And there I turn it into regular RTMP for Instagram and push live that way. I only rely on, I only need bandwidth for a smaller feed coming out of the hotel that we'll be in instead of two full RTMP feeds to Instagram. So that's the plan there. Um, so director mini, the camera for the main camera for that shot will be uh, the Sony ZV-1 Mark II, um, which has an actual zoom lens and a uh, tripod screw in a good spot now, so it doesn't block the battery slot. I have a little battery um, USB adapter so I can power it continuously or from a bigger power brick probably. And that's going to go on a tripod vertically. I do have a tiny tripod that I'm going to bring, which is not super tall, but it is small enough to fit in like a backpack, which is nice. This is also linked below. I bought this a couple of years ago, um, but I basically use it just for these kinds of things when I'm traveling. Um, the comes in two parts. There's the little tiny legs, and then this part goes and attaches to the top. So it gets much bigger once it's all attached. And this will either sit on a table in front of us or possibly on the floor. I don't know how we're going to set this up, but we'll figure that out once we're there. Um, but yeah, this is the tripod. It does let the camera go into vertical mode. Um, so that is, that's my plan. And again, I'm bringing all this first to Italy, which is silly, which is why I'm trying to make sure it's all small and not like, like, I'm not going to bring the monopod this time. Cause that was, that was, I had to go to the out on the outside of my suitcase. I just had strapped it to the outside because it was too big to fit inside, and that was annoying. Um, so, okay, so that's the camera, the main camera. I'm also going to plug in the Osmo Pocket 3 over USB into the Director Mini. Uh, so there's only going to be one HDMI camera used, one slot in the Director Mini used. This will be a webcam into the Director Mini, and this I will have as a handheld shot. Oops, I just hit record, apparently. Um, and... I didn't know the re the record button turned the camera on, but that is good to know. Um, I need to charge this tonight. I'm just remembering again. Uh, but yeah, so this will be the handheld shot, and it will this will be like how I can do close ups of the rig and that kind of stuff. So uh, cut between those two angles while we're on Instagram and audio for this will be the Rode Wireless Pro kit, which kind of annoyingly comes in two cases. The um, this part is for the for the two mics and the receiver. I got my little sticker on them. Uh, this is also a battery recharging case so they can stay charged when they're in here and then they can all charge with one USB cable. Then the other case is for all the accessories. Maybe I can not bring this whole case because I actually really only need the lav mics and the USB cord. Because I'm actually going to do USB into the director mini. Uh, oh, USB A. Right. I remember that now. So I don't even need that cord. I need a different cord. Uh, it only works with the USB A port. I should probably just bring this in case I want to plug into my camera. Um, don't really need the windscreens, so I might try to. Um, I might try to. Just find another thing to put these in because that's even smaller. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna leave this case here. Because I don't need to bring the whole. The whole case, just for, that. Um. I'll find another pouch. I have little pouches. And. The, oh yeah, this is, <laughs> Matt says, I have the Amazon knockoff for the wireless holder. The Rode one has their stupid logo over it. I don't advertise for free. I agree. Uh, the Rode Wireless Pro, um, where's the other one? I have another one in here somewhere. They, um, when I went to, to their event in LA, they actually sent me back with another one of these. So I have two kits, but and now you can now you can see what it looks like. 
normally, which is their giant logo. At least this is more subtle than on some of the other ones. Uh, but yes, I don't want to advertise if I'm wearing this. I don't want to advertise Rhodes logo all the time. So that's why there's a sticker um, that is a PK one product Should drop that link in the chat. Let me find that link really quick. Um, and they will go custom print you a sticker if Where did that go? There it is. Uh, yeah, so they will they will print you a sticker with your logo on it. You can actually go and um, I made house files once too. You can go and use this little preview tool to see what your logo looks like on uh, with the cutout. Oh yeah, DJI mic put their logo on both sides of the magnet, which is very annoying. I noticed that. I decided to not bring the mic, DJI mic, because um, where is it? Darn, I lost it. Must be my other drawer. Oh, there it is. Um, I agree. It's very annoying. The their little magnet, which you can use to hide the transmitter on the inside, is great. Uh, it is at least a cool design, but it is annoying that it has their logo on both sides. But at least it's like, this one's at least a fun design. Uh, but yes, also annoying. Well, wow, that's really scuffed up. Um, decided to not bring this because the main reason I have this is because it pairs wirelessly with this camera. So I've been using it for filming the house files updates because it's just super handy to be able to just set this on a tripod, pop this on my shirt, with Lily and we can just no wires, no receiver to fiddle with. Uh, and it just works great for that. But again, I'm not filming the interviews with my own rig. I'm using Joseph's rig to film the interviews at NAB. So I'm not going to bother bringing that because I don't think I will end up using it. Um, where was I? Okay. So audio, we've got the, we've got the custom branded wireless pros. This stuff doesn't quite fit in this case. So I think I do need to find another sleeve for it. It's fine. Audio, camera, second camera for the Major Director Mini. Um, I saw a question here. Why the Director Mini instead of the Ola Box? Um, I'm only, only planning on two angles. I could use the Ola Box Mini for this. Um, but the main reason is because the, so the yellow box ultra is the one that has the Instagram app in it. And I definitely don't want to bring the ultra cause it's just so big and I don't need to have that many inputs because I know I'm not going to have that many. I'm really only planning on this one live stream. Um, so small, I'm trying to get this gear down small to fit in the backpack for one. The ultra is pretty big, but more importantly, um, the way that the ultra streams to Instagram is it actually uses the Instagram app, which means, uh, you're not, you're not streaming RTMP to Instagram. You're just streaming using the Instagram app itself. And that means we can only stream to one Instagram account. But since Instagram supports RTMP now, we can stream to two Instagram accounts by pushing the same feed to two Instagram RTMP endpoints. And that means the, uh, it doesn't work with any of the Yolo Box products because the Yolo Box Instagram integration is the actual app. And the Yolo Box Ultra and the Mini, uh, if they're in the RTMP mode, they only stream a horizontal canvas. So if you stream a horizontal canvas to Instagram, it takes only the middle chunk. Um, and that means when you're looking at your, like you have to have your camera horizontal, so you're only using the middle chunk of your camera. Uh, you would have to like know that you're only seeing the middle sliver of the screen on Instagram, which is kind of hard to deal with framing. Um, why is someone walking around? Oh, I'm getting an Amazon delivery. Um, I was like, who is walking? I don't didn't think Lily was home yet. Um, 
So that's why not the Olabox, because the Olabox Ultra is big, but it, as well as the Mini, can't actually stream a vertical canvas to Instagram. Um, but Mage Vault Director Mini, you can put it into vertical mode and physically hold the device this way, physically rotate your camera and use the full camera sensor, see everything exactly as you're framing it for Instagram, add graphics that direction, that kind of stuff, and it'll all, uh, it all works natively in vertical. So that's the main reason. Um, that's the main reason why. Uh, the other... The other thing is, and I guess this isn't relevant for this trip, but um, the web graphics feature in the Major Director Mini does work better than the Olabox. It's just more compatible. It seems like. Um, oh, I see this question from TLV Sports. Is Singular Live graphics compatible with the Major Director Mini? Um, I haven't tested Singular Live yet, but I, my assumption is yes, uh, because it worked well with my graphics, which were not particularly well designed, and everything just worked fine. So. Oh, except the custom font didn't work on the Mage World Director Mini, so that might be a, a thing. Um, depends on how they do it, I guess. But yeah, that is the reason for the Mage World Director Mini over the Yellow Box. Um, yep. <laughs> oh, here's a here's an answer for me, probably because of the size, and I don't need all the Yellow Box features. It's um. The feature list is an interesting comparison because the there are now getting to be they're getting a lot of the same features and they still have a couple of different features each. So, but I also definitely don't need four in inputs on on um, on four inputs on the HDMI for that. Matt says, "Yeah, I would not want to lug the Ultra around either. I don't even want to lug my Sony A7 IV with my massive thirty five to one fifty lens either. iPhone and Pocket three. Uh, and I have the new iPhone 15 now, so like that's the one with the USB-C. So if I really wanted to, I could also use that to record like ProRes videos. Um, not that I'm planning to. So I'm like, do I even need to bring this? Uh, maybe not. Um, like I could use... Most of the B-roll is going to be filmed at the booths with Joseph's Lumix camera. Um, but the... But for this first stream, like maybe I could just use the Pocket 3 as the main camera and my iPhone as a secondary camera because you can stream wirelessly into the Major World Director Mini from an iPhone too. So I may not even need this one, which is interesting. Uh, I just feel weird not bringing an actual camera. I don't know. Um, IDJ Mike says, is streaming to Instagram better than to YouTube? That surprises me you choose Instagram over YouTube. Um... That's an interesting point. We could stream to all four, two YouTube channels and two Instagram channels. Maybe we'll do that. Um, one of the reasons we can do that is because I'll be streaming from my studio, not from the hotel. So I just need more encoders here that can that can do multiple streams. So that could be pushing to my, uh, well, I have the web presenter and an ATEM. I could put another ATEM in here, uh, turned on, leave it turned on and um, or push to my server that can do restreaming, for example. Um, Technicom says, I would take an ATEM switcher and stream to a platform such as Restream who allows transcoding to Instagram in the correct format. See, yeah, I, I don't want to use, I don't want to get Restream involved, but I also, I'm more concerned about the bandwidth leaving the hotel or my cell phone at the hotel. And, um, I'm not actually sure. Does Restream support? Does Restream support anything other than RTMP in, ingestion now? Um, I haven't checked in a while. Let's log in really quick, because the the key thing that's going to make this work is I can send like a two megabit stream from the hotel because it's um because it is. H.265 over SRT. Okay, let's see. Let's go into Restream. Uh, yeah, it just gives me RTMP. So I don't have...
RTMP pull. Um, I don't think this supports SRT, for example, right? So, and I don't know if it supports H.265 input either. Um, so that's the reason I don't want to use Restream. But the, so I can do SRT H.265 out of the hotel into my studio, and then I don't care about bandwidth here because I have tons of bandwidth. So from here, I can do the push to Instagram's exact correct format of 720 even. Um, Instagram does say to send 720, but now that I think about it, the test I did yesterday, I didn't send 720, I sent 1080 and it worked. Interesting, okay. iPhone 15 plus Blackmagic camera app is an appealing travel combo, it's true. Uh, although I think the Blackmagic camera app doesn't do ProRes, if I remember correctly iPhone 15 and ProRes, you need a USB hub and an external hard drive. You can do just a hard drive directly without a hub, but then you can't power it, obviously. So yeah, if you want to be able to power it, um, and that is getting kind of bulky then. So at that point, like this thing can do, not ProRes, but it can do, um, it can do super slow-mo, which is nice. It can do like 240 frames a second, which is really useful for B-roll. I always bring more than I need to a shoot because if I've found that if I bring it, I won't need it. But if I don't bring it, I will need it. It's true. <laughs> uh, very true. Murphy's Law video production. Uh, Matt says, what I hate is having everything but the one cable to make it work. So back in my working day, I carried way too much. I know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get better about actually setting up all the rig ahead of time so that I know all the cables that I need and then only bringing those because I really don't like overpacking. Uh, oh, okay, a couple other questions here. Um, David says, hi, streaming youth sports, looking for a camera. Oh, there's a, this is a two-part, there it is. Uh, tried GoPro, but it's not good for all the reasons you cite in your video on the subject. Yes, uh, mirrorless is too finicky, I agree. Something like the Mevo Core or the OLive camera is almost ideal, but I don't need micro four thirds quality or interchangeable lenses. iPhone quality is fine, but with USB power and HDMI out. Um, probably actually the best bet for you is a camcorder. If you don't need the quality of micro four thirds, then the camcorder styles uh, cameras are probably exactly what you want. Um, the lenses are built in so you don't get interchangeable lenses, but that's fine. The benefit, the one thing that they do often have is optical zoom which can also be really good for, for sports. So, um, and they will definitely have some sort of power input. Um, it's not always USB. Some of them are like a power brick, uh, DC power input. And most of them will also have HDMI out. So you can get one as cheap as like $200. Um, you know, I keep meaning to demo this. So why don't we just do this right now? <laughs> Let me go grab one because I have it. I bought one for $200 because I was like, I need to demo a $200 camera. Let's do that. Doing it live. Where is it? Okay, we're going to do this. Oh, what is the HDMI? It's micro. And this one is mini. So this camera, uh, this is, let me pull up the link. Yeah, I do need... I do need this button. I don't have a graphic for that. Um, you know, it's been so long since I bought this. 
Oh, less than a year. Okay. May 2023. It is still same day shipping. Okay. I'm just, I'm just grabbing this link. Oh, good. It's also at... Also at B and H and at Rama. Uh, this is the okay. Yes, this is my hope with this is that it is a decent $200 camcorder with clean HDMI and good zoom. Um, so this is I dropped a link in the chat. It's a Sony um, CX405. Um, I it does take tiny batteries, uh, but I should be able to steal. I think it's the same battery that my ZV-1 uses, which is weird. So because I don't think that one is charged. Um, this one has a USB port on the back, which I'm assuming can power it. Okay, so first we have the little classic camcorder lens cover. It's giving us the picture there. Um, not great visibility on the on the screen. You can see it like very quickly becomes not visible. Um, this is micro HDMI out, so I need to grab my cable. which I also have to bring to NAB because my um, ZB-1 is micro. But this, I can plug in to the rig here. Where is it? This one. Let's grab, actually, I guess, I guess I want a different cable. There is one. I have 16. This is why I have this patch panel. So I can plug in an HDMI cord there and an HDMI here. $200 camcorders used to come with a mic jack. Now they charge you another $200. I know that is the one downside here. So there's no mic input on this. Uh, although maybe it's, you can plug in a mic over USB now. I don't know. Um, I, don't, I would not, I would not count on that. Yeah, I'm really bummed there's no mic jack. Okay, but. Um, let's. There we go. And is it? Connected. Let me get the channel ID stinger would be good way step away too. <laughs> yeah, I need to work on my little my little branding there. Um, I'm gonna make that screen show the camcorder out. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's got the overlays on it. So let's fix that. Um, wow, everything in here is just so messy. Um, let's see if I can figure out where that menu is to get clean overlay. That's a zoom. So it's got this little joystick. Um, set up. Download music, what? HDMI, control for HDMI. USB. Oh no, HDMI resolution, TV type, yeah, auto, okay, control. Please tell me there's clean HDMI out on this. I'm gonna be really upset if there's not. Shooting mode, movie. Yeah, 
menu, camera. Okay. Display setting. That's the display of the shooting screen. What is that? On? Auto? What does that mean? Oh no. Oh, so that now it's not turning off. Well, this might be a dud. Grid line? No. Display setting? Per B and H, turn off HDMI control. Oh, good find. That is not a thing I would have expected to be linked. Demo mode, that's a good point. We don't need that. And I would not have expected HDMI control to be linked to that. Let's see if that works. Get out of here. And oh, that worked. Okay. So now, uh, now I can show you this picture. So we're going to cut to, this is the camera picture from the camera itself. Um, I see a little macro icon because I guess it's got like, wow, it's, that's actually really impressive how close I am to this. I am two fingers away from this camera and it's focusing on the camera. That's quite a nice macro feature. Um, let's spin this around and see what it looks like. Well, that's not bad. That's actually not half bad. Compare that to my main camera. It's a little, a little more uh, exposed, but I might be able to change that. So you do get the interface popping up on the screen when you do open the menu. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Shooting mode. Where's my Where's my settings? Ah, there's the intelligent auto. Turn that off. Now do I get any controls? It's not a touch screen, which is a little annoying. There we go. Color, low light, picture effects. No, I don't want picture effects. I just want exposure control. It looks like maybe not. Where's the, what intelligent auto is off? Camera optimizes settings, then shoots. Maybe it's. Aha, there we go. Exposure, auto, manual. Now I can tone it down a bit. Maybe like that. That's close. That's pretty good. This looks half decent, honestly. Um, yeah. We've learned, Patrick, that it does support clean HDMI out. You just have to turn off HDMI control, which makes no sense. Um, but yeah, this is the picture from the HDMI, the Sony $200 webcam or camcorder. The thing that makes this really cool is the zoom. Let's see, what can I zoom in on? Got a little plant over there. So this is the default um, wide, the widest, but watch this. This is optical zoom. And keep in mind, there's like actually very poor lighting back there. Uh, also stabilization. Okay, now I think we're into digital. These these usually have two ranges. One is optical and then, then it goes digital after that. But that's like, here's my little temperature sensor. That is that far away. <laughs> uh, so yeah, here's my, here's my calendar. I want to see my, my trip to Los Angeles for road. Look at that. This is also handheld. This is why camcorders are great. <laughs> so, 
Um, yeah, not a bad, not a bad deal. Not a bad look at that price point. I think that is the takeaway here. Uh, and the and the optical zoom is nice. I've always said camcorders are underappreciated. I know. I totally agree. I I have always said it, and I haven't yet actually rigged this camera up to show it. I think I should just leave this permanently installed somewhere. Um, new camera for NAB. Tempting. Tempting. Of course, your other cameras look better, but had you started the stream with this camera, I wouldn't complain. It's fine. It's fine. It's not going to win any awards. It's not a Netflix rated approved camera, but like, it's fine. And it's like a $200 camera. So yeah, it says 20, Gwen says 26 to 800 optical zoom, 35 millimeter equivalent, 800. Here to record. Hey, just tuned in our rehand held mode. Is this the new vlogging live rig? No, this is me showing people how camcorders are not actually a terrible idea, especially uh, $200 ones. So I bought this thing a year ago and I've just never brought it up on the stream. So I decided to break it out today. Oh, I just realized. What the heck? There's. There is a cord tucked into this little sleeve. That's the charger for it. What are you supposed to do with this? I I guess I can plug a, I need an extender for this to do anything with it. I just realized that was there. Um, yeah, so there you go. There's your camcorder uh, demo for the day. But that was for David. That was a question for David. Um, don't, if you don't need micro four thirds quality or interchangeable lenses, but you need clean HDMI out and USB power. Uh, yeah, I would absolutely go look for a camcorder. So double check the clean HDMI output on the camcorder that you're buying and double check that it has uh, some way to power it. But yeah. Um, focus is tending to the background. Oh, was it not doing a very good job of face tracking? Let me see if there's any, any, um, uh, settings for that. Focus auto. Oh, you can, you can do manual. Okay. Is there like a scene selection? Sometimes there's like a face priority face detection. Smile sensitivity, what? Mic levels. Uh, okay, I don't see any like. Oh, face detection is not available in manual exposure mode. Interesting. Let's go back to auto. And then go into. Face detection. Priority focus on people, people's faces. So now it's doing. Um, oh, yeah, I can see. I can see it's doing. It has a little line around my face now. Um, so as I'm not in the center, it should still be focusing on my face because like it's tracking my face. It's weird that it only works in auto exposure mode, but now it's full auto and yeah, it is. It is tracking my face regardless of whether I'm in the center of the frame. So that's cool. Does the camera turn off if you're not smiling? <laughs> no, it was. Um, I think it was um, for photos. So if it's in photo mode, let's see. Shooting mode. Go to photo mode and It's not taking a photo. Oh, there's no SD card. <laughs> that would help. Let's let's give it an SD card. Where's the SD card slot? Is it in the battery slot? No. Where? 
Where do SD cards go? Oh, micro SD. Preparing image database file. Okay. It's not doing it. <laughs> oh, smile shutter was turned off. Detect smiles and auto films still images. Always on. Dual capture. Detect smiling only during recording. Always on. Why is it not doing it? <laughs> it's not. Oh, it just did it. I saw it. Let me turn off the clean HDMI so you can see it. Uh, where was that? That was in setup. Uh, in HDMI control, weirdly turning it on. Okay, so now you see the menu, and I'm in video mode. Hello? Oh, come on, you did it a second ago. Apparently this is not a good feature. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Do you have to like, not smile for a while. Aha! <laughs> you have to be not smiling for a while. And then when you smile, everybody say cheese. And then it captures it. Oh my god, that's hilarious. What a weird feature. Okay, that's enough of that. That's a terrible feature. I disapprove. I disapprove of that feature. Um, we're gonna turn that off. <laughs> Back to movie mode. Uh, so yes, Sm face detection off. Um, smile sensitivity, normal smile, big smile, slight smile. Uh, this has been fun. Okay. Oh, and now I need to turn clean HDMI back on. So this is actually useful again. Control for HDMI off. And I wish it was touchscreen because this is really not fun to navigate with a little joystick. That day the engineers didn't have much to do. <laughs> Someone was like, Oh, we can do face detection. We have AI. They can call this camera an AI camera now. Save this live stream for future use in memes. If I was Aaron's editor, I would edit that video into a short and just release it. Maybe I should have my editor do that. Does the camcorder need a powered mic? There is no mic input at all. So you have to bring your audio in through something else, unfortunately. I think you have to spend more on a camcorder than $200 to get, uh, to get mic inputs. I seem to recall there was an issue using HDMI, HDMI out and external power over USB at the same time. That would be a bummer. I have a battery. Look how nice it is. I have this drawer here. I can just have things accessible. Uh, imagine that furniture. Okay. Let's see what happens if I plug this in to this battery. Obviously I would need a extension for this. Um, the batter icon went away, so I guess it's working. And I'm still seeing, still seeing uh, clean HDMI. So I think it's fine. Look how close it can focus. This is like an inch away. My my finger can barely fit in that, and it's able to focus on that. Oh, there's no battery in that one. I was going to turn it on. Yeah, this seems to work fine. Um, 
Is the SD card in the strap too? <laughs> that would be clever. Um, nice camcorders have XLR and all the controls. Mine has built-in ND filters. Okay, yeah, I mean, you can go spend a lot more than this on a camcorder if you want. Okay, let me see. According to the spec, it's only one centimeter. Gwen says, I love her while geeking out over a $200 camcorder instead of $100,000 gear. Yeah, right. Just join what's this I see about camcorders? I was just trying to, so there was a, there was a question about what kind of camera should, should, <laughs> should you use if you don't want to fiddle with mirrorless cameras, but you uh, also need uh, better than a GoPro. And yes, camcorders like this one are cheaper than a GoPro and better. So I, I think that wins the day. I shared your smiley face on Facebook and YouTube with a link to today's stream. I see you're not very active on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, no, I deleted my, all my, all my posts from Facebook years ago. And my profile just says like, go find me elsewhere. And I just stopped posting on Twitter because I got mad at it and the rebrand of X. And I even like to the point of when I made these business cards for NAB, I actually did not put my Twitter on there because I was like, I just, I just don't use it anymore. Uh, so it's not relevant. Joseph still posts on Twitter. I'm trying to convince him to stop posting, but he also maybe changed that to an X icon and I, it hurt, it hurt my soul to do that. So I hope he appreciates it. <laughs> just think of what the developer had to think when he got assigned to create the smile feature. Also the testing of that. Can you imagine sitting in front of your computer having to go all day? I have the older version CX380 and it still works and it's touchscreen. Why do they take away the touchscreen? That sounds like it'd be very useful. Uh, yeah, well, cool. I'm not surprised it still works. That's great. Um, the other one that I've used a ton in the past is um, this Canon camera. And I don't know if I can plug it in. Maybe I can. Um, oh. So the, this, this is years old now at this point, it's, um, so we can turn this off. Grab a micro SD before I forget it. Tuck the little power cord back in the strap. This is a Can Canon Vixia R500. Um, it is, I bought this in like 2015 or something. I was using this for, for gigs. Oh, right. This is the micro HDMI, not or mini HDMI, not micro. Um, this one has its own power brick rather than USB, which is annoying, but that might not be true on the newer ones. Um, at least the thing folds down. Um, but I filmed, I would use this often as like the secondary angle of a, of a conference. Um, and then it's fine. This is, this is again, quite old though. So I think they might be a lot better now. Where's the, where's the power? There it is. Um, I can't get this onto the stream unless I go find a micro or a mini, oh my God, mini to uh, HDMI adapter though. But Yeah, never call it X, only Twitter. I agree. Um, I'm okay with the rebranding to X. It isn't Twitter anymore since the takeover. That's true. Maybe that's a way I can justify it in my head. It isn't Twitter anymore anyway, so let's stop calling it Twitter. This one is a touchscreen. English. 2014 is the first date. I don't, I don't care about the date. Um, MP4. Great. Lens. Oh, it's much slower to uh, to focus. No memory card. Ooh, that picture doesn't even look as good on the screen. It still focuses very close. I have Aaron says I have six of the Canon R eight hundred. Is that the new version of this one? This is the five hundred. Do a review between this this and the Sony Venice two. Ooh, what's that one? Yeah, <laughs> sure. 
that looks expensive. Uh, cannot be purchased online. No price available. Solid option. Solid option. Um, the Okay, so I'm just looking at this picture in the viewfinder. It is not as good. It is not as good. It's much more noise in that picture when I zoom in that much. Similar zoom range, though. I guess it's a little bit shorter. But definitely, um, the Sony one is a lot better, which makes sense. It is like... Um, six, seven, eight years newer. So yeah. Is a $200 camcorder better than the $75,000 camera? <laughs> That's what Top Gun Maverick used. Oh, that'd be, that makes sense. Camera says, I love the camcorder discussion. Can't deal with the futzing and shopping of complicated gear some days. There's nothing, there's something about point and shoot that appeals to me. I agree. I mean, and that's the thing is that like, when you're, especially when you're dealing with multiple cameras, um, for a multicam shoot, you often just don't want to fuss with, with the, um, ugh, wow, that power brick. Just don't want all the fuss of lenses and settings and junk. So, uh, that's why I was using camcorders when I was doing the conference filming. Cause like, well, one, I didn't want to spend more than that on all the cameras and lenses and the need to deal with power supplies for them and a lot of the because a lot of the mirrorless cameras didn't even used to let you run them on external power so yeah was the sony cmos i don't know what is this i'll have to dig into the specs i guess there's no no branding of it on here Sometimes they brand. Yeah. It's so light. It's weird. It's like, it does not need to be this big. They clearly made it this big because people expect camcorders to be this form factor. But it feels like there's nothing inside of it. And that could have been like a tiny little thing. Um. Okay, where were we? Where were we? I used to use multiple Sony AX700 camcorders. They were great for my live streams. Some clients hated them as they looked too consumer. It is, yeah, it's a different look. Neil says, yes, back illuminated Exmor R CMOS. Cool. Good morning, Oleg. Okay, let me scroll back here. There were a couple of questions. Um, Gwen says, to connect an ATEM SDI 30 frames per second HDMI monitor 16030, you need up, down, cross, decimator, or can use a small SDI to HDMI converter. The converters don't convert frame rates. So yeah, you would need something else. Um, I have this problem with mine. It's it's ridiculous. The monitor that is over, you can't quite see it. The monitor that's over here that I'm looking at right now is actually a monitor that I should not have bought. It was like $200. And now I know why, because it only supports 60 frames per second. So I can't use it with my ATEM, which is in 30. So I stuck a decimator behind it, which is a $300 device and I did that because I had it and I wasn't using it for anything else, but like I would not recommend doing that. I would rebuy a new monitor that supports 30 frames a second input because it's silly to spend $300 on a converter. Uh, when you were testing live streaming with Pocket 3, did you use 5 gigahertz or 2.4 2 Wi-Fi on video? It was really choppy. Are there settings for adjusting bit rates? I did not see any settings for the bit rate. If I remember correctly, um, it was fiddly and um, I don't remember if I was on five gigahertz Wi-Fi, but I think what it was is my my Wi-Fi broadcast the same SSID on both. So I don't know which one it hopped on to. I would assume five. Um, I was not impressed and I would not rely on the live streaming capability of the Pocket 3. Patrick says, what are you most excited about? Or what are you hoping that will be released at NAB? I am 
very excited about Rode's new product, which I still can't talk about, but I will be able to talk about this time next week. Um, actually, in exactly one week and four minutes, I will be talking to them at their booth um, about the new product and filming a little bit and hopefully get that video out ASAP. It'll go on Instagram and YouTube uh, as shorts. Um, it's also a chance I am going to, I'm going to try right after the stream to record a video about it and um, schedule it to get posted at 10 a.m. when the product launch uh, is, is, is live. NDA coming to a close. Yes, I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> very hard to uh, hold my tongue. I'm always worried anytime I mention road that I'm going to accidentally say what, what it is. Um, so, yes, that'll be nice to not have to bite my tongue about that anymore. Uh, that's what I'm excited about. I can't tell you about the new product, unfortunately. I haven't. I signed an NDA so I could go see it. Um, but I did see it in person, and um, yeah. And, oh, they were going to try to send it to me ahead of time uh, so I could actually do a, a hands-on video before NAB or post it at NAB. Unfortunately, it didn't happen, so I think they were still working out the release. And um, the... Uh, yeah, so... I'll hopefully get it after the show, and then I can bring it back here and show it live. It'll be fun. Alex says, I would love to go to NAB, but unfortunately I live in the UK. It is a long trip, but you should come to IBC, which is basically like NAB, but it's in Amsterdam. Much, much shorter trip. Tell us about the road product. We won't tell anyone. <laughs> sure. Any black magic expectations? I think um, it would be interesting if they did launch a new A10 Mini like device with you know facing all the problems of the a10 mini but i don't know if i'm actually i definitely am not expecting them to do that um what i would be excited about is if they did firmware updates for the a10 mini series that added srt though so i think that is that would be very interesting um and it doesn't seem that far-fetched Well, horses, I'm finding it hard to get decimators now. Is there another chip shortage or brand change I'm not aware of? I don't know. I haven't looked in a while. Oleg says, what's a better choice for streaming with my setup? Mac mini, external capture card, three cameras, a hardware solution or software, considering buying a device for streaming. Okay, so first of all, don't buy anything until next week. <laughs> Just going to say that. Put that out there. Um, but the uh, if you're getting, if you're, if you have a Mac mini and three cameras, it's going to be pushing it pretty hard to do three cameras with three capture cards. So um, I would be much more confident in a three camera setup with a Mac mini or Mac laptop of any kind with a hardware switcher between the three cameras so that your computer sees only one camera. So like if you want to do OBS for streaming, then don't try to connect three cameras into OBS with three different capture cards, do your three camera switching on an external device. This is like an A10 mini or anything like that, where that hardware is doing the switching and giving your computer feed one USB signal. Um, that that's what I would, that's what I would recommend. So there's, um, and if you, that's only if you want to stream with OBS because you want to use graphics or whatever else you're doing with OBS. If you don't need to use OBS or any kind of software and you want to do a three camera stream, I would recommend going all hardware on it and just get the computer out of the picture entirely other than like for configuration and stuff. Um, so that's like, that's the, uh, you know, A10 mini or similar like OC, the OC device or um, which is here somewhere. Uh, this is like the, the um, OC's version of an A10 mini uh, where it is, for HDMI ins, it can stream directly with a network connection, that kind of stuff. So these things are not expensive anymore. So John says, is a Mackie Veal Z series mixer with a Rode logo on it? <laughs> I know it's very confusing that Rode and Mackie are the same company now.
Uh, remember last live stream when you told me to use the Ultra Studio Monitor 3G to take the output of the Ecamm to YOLO Live? Yeah, okay. I bought it, and what happened is that the output is a small window, not full 9x16. That's weird. There must be a setting in Ecamm for that. It must be a set. It must be the computer doing it because the Yolo Live, Yolo Live won't scale the inputs down like that. That mon, that box doesn't have any scaling features like that. So it has to be something in Ecamm. Um, I would poke around. I I haven't used Ecamm very much, but I've I use it with I use that device with other things like, um, I have Lily's podcast or her her YouTube studio upstairs set up, going from OBS through the, that Ultra Studio Monitor three G. Uh, into her ATEM for graphics. How can I create a budget-friendly solution to delay an HDMI image mm -hmm, by 10 seconds? Currently, I'm using OBS for this purpose, but I'm looking for dedicated hardware. I have not seen any dedicated hardware that can do this, uh, certainly not in the price point you are looking for. Um, I'm sure it exists for television studio budgets, um, but no, I have not found anything like this. I think your solution of OBS is probably the best bet. Um, I have done it with software on Linux, but that was actually for a five minute delay. Um, and it wasn't precise enough to do a 10 second delay, uh, but it worked great for a five minute delay. But no, you are, um, yeah, you found the budget friendly option. Oh, here's a tip on Ecamm. Make sure the Ecamm scene is full and not in a window. Sam says, what was that switcher you showed a few minutes ago? It's called the OC Ghost Stream Deck. I, I don't have a video about it, but I do have a couple of live stream demos of it. So if you search my channel for OC, O-S-E-E, -E, um, you'll find it, you'll find my live stream demos of it. And it's essentially like if, that is just a little bit too tall for the store. Um, it's essentially, what you would build if you looked at an A10 Mini and then said, what does everybody get annoyed with about the A10 Mini? Let's fix it. And that's basically what this is. So actually useful buttons on the top. Um, there's two HDMI outs. There's two USB ports. There's a network. There's uh, two microphone inputs and a headphone jack. Um, there's an SD card slot so you can play videos back from the SD card. Uh, it's got similar like program preview switching, similar like um, media player. Uh, it can actually do NDI input also, which is wild. Uh, so it's like, yeah, it's basically like what you would get if you fixed all the problems with an A10 Mini. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do have a live stream that goes that went into like everything about this. Um, and I'm probably gonna do one again because they have some updates in uh, firmware updates for it as well. So masses, we had a device in the Fox sports truck if we need it, but nothing in there is cheap for the, for the 10 second delay. Yeah, I believe it. John says, if anybody in the SF Bay area needs a decimator, I have three and I'm willing to rent on the cheap for events. Oh, that's nice. Thanks. Um, oh, apparently they make small batches and ship them to the U S. Oh no. Uh, IDJ Mike says, what are the direct many limitations for input layers on a single scene? Example, HDMI 3 on top of HDMI 2 on top of HDMI 1 and are all adjustable in size and position. I think so. Let me grab the batteries for this, which are charging. See, I need my little, I need my little break screen, which I don't have. I don't have, I have music. That's it. Um, the, so the batteries that I have are ridiculous. I also started labeling my batteries with when I buy them so that I can know if they're expected to have a, what the expected lifetime is. Um, they have a little screen on them. 
which shows the voltage, but they also have USB input for charging. If you don't want to bring a charger, USB-C and micro, and they have USB output on the bottom. So you can power like a phone with it, which is cool. Um, but they're, they're huge, but they do last a long time. So let's get that booted up and play around with it. Do I have a little screen wipe? That would be a useful thing to put in this drawer. I'm obsessed with these drawers, in case it wasn't clear. Um, if I wasn't retired and not spending much money, I would get the OC switcher for sure. I hate my Ata Mini Pro. I I know, they really just like... The Ata Mini was so good for what it was at the time that it was launched, and they just... Um, it's still good for what it is, it's just that it hasn't changed in like four years, really. Um, let me dig up the link to those batteries, because uh, I feel like that would be helpful while this thing is turning on. Um, can I find it? January. There it is. Uh, they're not even that expensive. These are first power. Okay. Um, they really raise this thing up a lot. Uh, what was I doing? Layers. This is my vertical stream for, um, I need to redo my graphics, but this is the vertical stream for the for the live stream at before NAB. Um, you can upload custom graphics now when there's no HDMI detected, which is super cool. Let me go into a show the default horizontal show so that I don't mess up the Instagram stream. This is what I mean by you can just change the whole thing into horizontal mode or vertical mode. It's very cool. Okay, so what was the question? Limits for input layers on a single scene. Example, HDMI 3 on top of 2. Top of, yeah, okay. Um, also, you know what I should do is plug this in so you can see the screen. Instead of looking at it through the tiny camera. Uh, duplicate screen. Actually, it is useful to see my fingers as I'm pushing the buttons. But uh, what, let's make sure that's focused. 1D5, because I don't leave my cameras in autofocus mode. Because normally, oh, it is not in focus. Because the battery is so tall, it's focused on the bottom of the table. There we go. Uh, okay, so what are we doing? We're looking for how many th things you can stack on a scene. So I need to get some inputs plugged in. HDMI 1. HDMI 2. And then let's grab a webcam of some sort. Uh, I think I have a USB cord. Somewhere. This is the problem with USB cords, is that there's so many different kinds now. And they also, I don't know how to keep track of them. Okay. Um, HDMI 1, HDMI 2. Let's get a webcam. Plugged in, which will be this little ob spot. And power. There we go. Oh, that's not straight at all. Webcam one. Uh, no signal, it's still booting up. There it goes. Okay. Great. Now we have three sources. We have a video clip as well, and then this layout. So let's make a new layout and see what we can do. HDMI one. I can do that. I can add 
HDMI 2. Great. I can do that. I can scale it. I can add a webcam. Yep. I can scale it. I can reorder them like layers. Uh, this device is called the Magewell Director Mini, which is, um, I had, do have some videos about this on my channel if you're curious, but we are trying to push the, um, limits. I'll drop this link in the chat. Uh, so we have three videos and what was, what else did you want to see? Oh, there's only two HDMIs, but I do have a webcam and two HDMIs. And then all are adjustable in size and position, yeah. And layering. So I can bring this up to the front if I want. I, oh, and I can crop it, right? So I can be like, I only care about that part of this angle. And now I can put it there. I probably want a background. So let's grab a picture and use my dark background. Make it just a little quick full screen here and then drop it down to the bottom. Uh, and then for this one, start tracking me. There we go. Great. One of those inputs could have a green screen. Ooh, I, let's see, let's see. Um, I should be able to do that with NDI. So let's grab that. Uh, and then let's do NDI stream. I've got a pro convert here. Aha, we found a limit. Three sources of video in a scene. Okay. So there is a limit. But let's do this. Let's do this side by side. And now we can add NDI. From a pro convert. Oh, which is um, got a video feed in it, but I can route uh, I can route my computer screen to it and I can do some keynote graphics. That's what we were doing yesterday. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's go into keynote really quick and do, um, let's make a little graphic over here, shape. Oh, I can hear the fan kicking in on the director mini now because it's doing some actual work. Format, bring it to the back. Let's make this pink. Okay, so if this works, I should be able to bring this in over NDI. So let me go over to my ATEM and set the major well encoder to the computer screen. So the NDI feed is my computer screen now. Can I key this out? Wow. That worked. Okay, so if this is if this is actually full screen, then I've got my little lower third. Size full screen. Uh, let's see, the Chrome key is not perfect. Why is there no advanced? We can eye drop it. It's got a little bit of a fuzzy edge, I can see. I don't know why advanced. Oh, there we go. Similarity. Ooh, this is hard to see. Let me bring this on full screen for you. So we're looking for that little fuzzy edge at the edge of the pink. There we go. Smoothness. And spill. I think it's looking pretty good. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Save. And now we have two video sources. Oops, no, it's not perfect. I need to do this on a screen that isn't behind a teleprompter. It's too hard for me to see it there. Um, so we've got two HDMI sources and an NDI source that's bringing in my computer screen, which means actually if I had NDI, if I had software generating graphics using NDI, I wouldn't even need to use my computer monitor for it, which is how I'm doing this now. But um, oh, I can see why it's got the little fuzzy edge, because actually in Keynote, I see that that edge 
was not, that edge is not actually clean. I can see like a computer monitor. Yeah. Um, pretty good though. Let's get the, get that out of there. And yeah. Did anybody know it can do that? Totally works. Trying to explain this feature to you alive. They need this. Um, yeah, with the Yolo box, you can key out a camera source on the way in, which is better than the ATEM. Um, but yeah, you can't use it as an overlay. Oh, right. You can kind of do it if you do it as a picture in picture where it's picture in picture, but they're both full screen. That does work. Um, it's different. It's different though. It's and and then yeah, it's weird. I don't know. This is this is better. Oh yeah, only two. That's right. That's that is right because it's picture in picture, so it only works with two sources or one one camera with your graphics over it. You can't do graphics on top of whatever. Eric says, "Man, I'm finding the Mageful Director Mini more compelling every time I see it in use." I know they did a really good job with it. This is why I was so impressed with it when I saw it last year. When can you fill a live screen so you can live edit the lower third? Wait, what? When can you? I don't understand. Sorry. I <laughs> want to buy my yellow box so I can buy the director mini. Um, ideally, the final top overlay would be full screen for animated graphics from OBS. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, this is. That would work um, if I. Oh, I can route my OBS graphics into this. Sure. If I go, um, let me send my OBS graphics to, to NDI, so Ultra Studio Fill. So now if I show a comment on, if I show a comment on the screen, this is my main, my main, stream but if we go look at um what happened to the video what did i do did i lose oh it's keying <laughs> chroma key key color i don't know if this is going to work because i need to key out black Uh, advanced. I needed to make my OBS have a green background. Yeah, there it is. I can see it poking through now. Um, so I need my, I need, I really do need to key green. So that means I need to turn this off from my ATEM right now. So I can go into OBS and here, give this a green background color. Uh, we'll do that. Bright green, fully green. And turn it on. Yeah. And now this is actually going to go out my deck link. Oh, yeah, here we go. Watch this. As I'm making the green bigger. Uh, now let's just grab that proper green. So here, ooh, advanced similarity, there we go. I'll show you that better. So this is now, this is actually pulling my OBS graphics into the director mini using, well, in my case, NDI, but it would work over HDMI too. Oh, that key is not perfect. This is why I like a Luma key better actually, but I don't see a Luma key option in the director mini, just chroma key. Uh, but we can go here and try to correct it. I can't see it on my <laughs> teleprompter. Um, I need my TV screen to be big. There we go. Okay. 
That is removing the green fringe from it. It's a little bit hard to use the tiny touch screen. That looks a little better. Okay, save that. And now I've got OBS graphics here. So for example, if I show um, this, I can bring in more graphics from OBS, like the weather. I could bring in, um, well, if I hide the chat message, it'll hide animated now. Oh, apparently my hide is not animated. My show is anim animated. Why is that not animating? There it goes. Now you can create animated overlays with audio. You can pull stream elements or stream labs or channel alerts. Absolutely. 96 people here. Let's do a drop a like on the video. It helps out the channel. Thanks for the reminder. Do like and subscribe. Um, yeah, very cool. Very cool little thing. Uh, oh, there was another question about it. I saw. Where did it go? Uh, the ah, oh, like it's like OBS Studio, but all on one device. Can I stream to Instagram with it? Yes, and I'll be doing that next week on Sunday as a demo. Actually, um, this you can you can turn this around into vertical mode also. So this is horizontal mode, but if you go to the menu and go, you can actually create a vertical stream, which is what I'll be doing for NAB. And then the whole interface rotates and becomes vertical, and um, then. You can actually stream that vertically to Instagram so that you get the full full frame effect and it works great. So definitely can stream to Instagram on this. Is the latency of the director menu lower enough for iMac? Uh, interesting question. How am I going to demo this? I don't know if it is. So let's pull up HDMI 1 and you can see the this is the feed from the director mini. I don't have it in clean HDMI mode. Uh, maybe I should fix that because you would probably obviously not want the, the interface. So external screen, I can make it say clean program. And now the this is the feed from the director mini. So <laughs> yes, that battery. The beefy battery. Um, so the uh, I need this HDMI out next to my camera. That's what I need. Okay, so we're gonna go to Super Source setup on the ATEM. That's how I'm gonna do it. So. Box one is my camera and box two is the input from the director mini. Ooh, just another Amazon box. So this is uh, top left is the camera feed. Bottom is the director mini HDMI out, and I do see some delay. It looks like it's only a couple of frames. That's not too bad. Um, so this is what this is the delay out for what you get for iMag, because if you were projecting this on a screen, you would get this amount of delay, which is. I think fine. I think that's acceptable. G Brady Media says, have you tried? Oh, I lost my comments. Let me bring the, let me bring the comments back. There we go. What is downstream key three doing? Oh, it was the animation, the like animation. Um have you tried to plug in a touchscreen monitor into that unit and see if you can control it from the bigger screen? It does. Yes, it does actually work. I um, I can't do that and then also share the screen, obviously, to the stream. And I think my cable for the monitor is somewhere else. But yeah, 
it does work. Um, if you plug in a, um, you can plug in a touchscreen monitor. So what I have connected right now is the um, this dongle that converts to HDMI. But if you have a USB monitor, you can plug the USB monitor into the USB port directly. And then if it's a touchscreen monitor, it does work. And then that gives you the bigger screen to work with. It's very cool. That latency isn't bad at all. Yeah, I think it's probably fine for most things. Um, IDJ Mike says, the only way I could do this on the Yolo box is take HDMI one and two into a switcher, then into the Yolo box and do picture in picture with that input and the picture in picture from the Yolo box for the third HDMI. Yep. I, yep, no, that's a clever workaround. Who is the bicycle thief? Why does I think it's a city name? What do we monitor social media for your uh, N A B <laughs> NBA? Um, the the social media. So I am going to be um, so it's my Instagram. Ooh, do I have a little? I do. It's my Instagram. Uh, these will be on in the reels section on Instagram, and they will also be posted to my YouTube as shorts. So this same channel, uh, but go into the shorts tab for that. And the, uh, that's where you can find them for, and they'll be, they'll be, they'll be posting that starting on Sunday, probably a couple hours after the show floor opens. Cause we, we have an editor lined up. Who's going to be doing the edits in real time. Um, so hopefully within a couple of hours of the show opening, you'll start seeing interviews. Starting with Road. They're my first stop. I'm very because I just wanted to get that out there. Uh, so they're my first stop. And then I um who who's next? I have a couple lined up already. Uh so that I just can knock them out. I have Road. Joseph has a bunch because he gets out of a talk. Oh, OC is going to be one of my next stops. And Hollyland, I think they're going to have some new stuff at their booth. And then um, I need to line up some more for the next day still. I won't have a Magewell visit until Tuesday. Um, they got booked up quick, but yeah. Those are my pre-scheduled ones. And then I have some... Uh, a lot will be will be un unscheduled. So yeah, just wander around. Technicom says I find NDI needs to be tamed, meaning it will broadcast on all network interfaces installed. Oh, it really? They found a way to control NDI output interface. NDI input can be controlled. Um, it depends on the software. So I'm using. I'm broadcasting over OBS right now. OBS is oh right. I could have brought in OBS. NDI directly. That's funny. I have, I forgot I was doing that. This, um, this one, which is, let's see, uh, how do I edit? Yeah, NDI. I guess I can just delete the NDI source. So if I add a new NDI source, I should actually see OBS. Yeah, there it is. I could have done that instead. That's, that's silly. Um, and then like here's the weather ticker from OBS. And now that's just going straight of the network, not through any HDMI hops, which is better. Um, there's no, there's no way, there's no alpha channel in, um, in OBS, is there? Or in, in, in NDI, can I do that? I've never tried that. I normally don't have pure NDI um, hops, but, what we were looking for was settings. Where is, where is that even set up in here? NDI output settings, NDI SDK Apple. There's no settings for the interface. This is where it would be uh, to choose like only broadcast it on a certain interface. So yeah, it's broadcasting it on um, my travel router as well, which is silly. Yeah, uh, but if you're using other NDI software, it might let you choose the interface because it depends on the software. Um, 
anyway, that's cool that I can bring in OBS into the director mini without any intermediate steps using NDI. That is very cool. I didn't manage to note down your Instagram. It is here. Aaron PK underscore TV. Oops. Get that out of there. Uh, it should be linked for my YouTube channel too. Did I say something not allowed? Comment was removed. I didn't. Oh, I don't see the removed comments here. Uh, I don't see it on. I don't know. I don't see a removed comment on the other window either. I have a couple of words that are in my banned list of words, but it's not like NDI or something. <laughs> um, not going this year, still store after all the walking last year. Yeah, I mean, I actually like seriously hurt my foot last time uh, and it's mostly recovered, but not 100%. So hopefully I don't do that again. Are you doing any interview meetups with Rocky Nash? I'm going to definitely like meet up with her at some point, but I don't have any um, anything planned yet. I should work on that this week. Any advice for a first time we're going to NAB? Uh, bring less stuff than you think. <laughs> the, you are not going to want to carry around a heavy bag for four days. So I'm, I went through all the stuff I'm bringing here. Um, this is probably the biggest thing that I'm bringing just because it has these batteries, but I'm only going to, um, be using this the morning before the show starts. So it's actually never going to come to the expo hall floor. So we're sitting at a hotel nearby. So we're going to stream from the hotel. Then I'll go run back upstairs and toss this back upstairs and then only have the small stuff with me. So I, on the show floor, I'm going to have the small camera, um, probably not even the Rode goes wireless goes because that's just for the Instagram stream. But this is for B roll, so I can shoot B roll on my own, um, and then like my business cards and stuff. Really, I will probably bring the Pocket Three um, and the Insta Three Sixty. That's the other one, Insta Three Sixty, because um, this thing is great for. Uh, expo hall shots. So this is, this goes, it has a little selfie stick and then you can like stick it way over your head and get, um, zooming around the expo hall shots, which is always fun to insert into other videos. Uh, it looks like a drone shot without it being a drone inside, which would, um, probably make a lot of people mad if I tried that. Gwen says, Gwen says, if you have time, stop by DJI. Rumor has it they're announcing RS4 Pro and new drone. Definitely. Yeah. I don't know if there's, I don't know if they do interviews. I didn't interview anybody there last year. Um, and I don't have any press contacts there, but I can at least stop at the booth. I did see their drone announcement placeholder thing. So yeah. I DJ Mike says one of my favorite things about your lives is how you test out questions live. If you have the equipment to do so 10, 10, if you remember if I didn't have to support six kids, no problem. No, no worries at all. Um, your questions and support is enough here for sure. Um, and your reminders for people to hit the like button. Always helpful since I forget it. Um, but yeah, my, that, that was my goal with, um, actually the, so the over here, you can't see it, it's not in the shot. I should probably fix that. But in the, in the, can you see it now? <laughs> this. I have a drawer under under here now uh, for for that's just accessible from this table. My eventual goal is to make this one table the only streaming desk and decommission the other desk entirely uh, because I was realizing that I was not demoing things because they weren't close by and I can only store so much stuff on the floor here <laughs> close by. And now I have all these drawers and I can stash them with all the stuff that is like current, current and active in testing, like the director mini or the OC device. And then uh, with the little breakout snake here, um, this gives me a bunch of 
HDMIs and stuff that go back into the rack so I can very quickly connect this up or then um, swap out for something else like like the camera we were looking at earlier. So that's my goal to get to that point because yeah. Don't forget about good walking shoes. Absolutely. You are going to walk a lot uh, at NAB. The halls are huge and uh, far away from each other. So definitely good walking shoes. A dream job demoing tech devices and talking about it live with viewers. I mean, it's pretty fun. It is pretty fun. And I'm very grateful to have got to the point where I can actually get some of the stuff in here without me having to buy it, which has not always been true. So I appreciate Magewell, for example, for sending me this one because now I can just have it here and always ready to show. Uh, it helps. Okay, it's been like two hours. I think we're gonna wrap this thing up. Um, I've got eight euros here ready to go into my wallet for my trip. <laughs> Still very pleased about this little contraption that came off the printer this morning. Um, did you post the link to the big batteries? I dropped it in the chat earlier. I'll make sure it gets into the video description too. Um, and then I'll report back after I bring them to NAB because they didn't actually, I got them in January, so I haven't used them on, uh, on a trip yet. I'm just very pleased with wallet contraptions and, and small things. Um, here's the other card thing that I, that I'm totally excited about this. Same size as a credit card. It is a fork and a spoon that fold out from uh, from this credit card. So you just collapse back down, pop it in, and now I will always have silverware if I need to. And it's like only the, it's only as thick as like maybe three credit cards. It's great. <laughs> um, okay, this has been fun. We are we're done. We're done. I need to actually go pack now. I need to I need to pack my bag for reals because I leave first thing in the morning. I need to um record a video about the road announcement and. I think that's the main. Oh, and my accounting for taxes. The tax day is NAB day two. Um, so that's the rest of my day. Um, <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, should I? Should I? I'm not going to sell it, but I can put the print. I can put the 3D file up. I'll I'll add that to the description too. Uh, which means that's the first thing I do when I'm done. Okay, great. We're done. Thank you all. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for all the questions. Thanks for um, hanging out for like two hours today. It's been fun. Uh, hopefully I will see you live on Instagram Sunday morning, a little bit earlier, maybe at the same time as this stream uh, from the show floor, not from, from the hotel next to the show. And, um, but definitely not doing a one hour live stream. I need to go straight to the booths to start filming interviews. Um, so after that, we will be back normal time in two weeks. So, uh, see you all then. We can talk about all of the fun products that got released at NMB and see what other things we can try out live. That's always fun. I need to take a break before I can record this video. I've been talking for two hours straight. <laughs> That's how this goes. Okay. Uh, thanks everybody. See you all again next time. Bye.